We live in a world where the last two Magic the Gathering releases are actively failing. Karlov Manor data is in, and while the set is about to release, it has numbers that I have not seen in some time. We're going to compare this to more recent standard Magic the Gathering releases, and we're also going to talk about the big elephant in the room, the giant question. What went wrong with this set, or is Magic the Gathering as a whole headed downhill? All right, let's talk about it. Karlov Manor is definitely a swingy, controversial release. If you love Karlov Manor, you're all in, baby. You love the theme, the mechanics, and everything about the set, but there's not much middle ground, because if you don't like Karlov Manor, you absolutely cannot stand it. You're not buying anything from it, and the sales of this product will reflect that. Yes, we track every single sold listing of sealed product on TCG Player, and Karlov Manor is... I don't mean to spoil most of the rest of the video, but it's not doing well. But we have specifics as we were going to look into the numbers, the prices of the products for Karlov Manor, compare them to both Lost Caverns of Ixalan and Wilds of Eldraine, and then we're going to address the elephant in the room. When it comes to these diminished sales numbers over both Ravnica Remastered and Karlov Manor, is this a set-by-set -set problem, as in we're not getting good sets, or is this a big Magic the Gathering problem? I'm sure you guys will have stuff to tell me in the comment section below about your thoughts on that. But without further ado, let's do some comparison. And the totals are in for the Karlov Manor. We're not saying the M word, but just Karlov Manor. The collector box has only sold a 330 30 copies. It's currently for sale at $185 on the secondary market. And this is, well, let's call it astonishing. When compared to things like Ixalan and Wilds of Eldraine, it, well, it doesn't even compare not favorably. It just doesn't compare. Ixalan sold 2,500 plus collector booster boxes at an average price. Well, the price right now, not average price, but the price right now is $258 on the secondary market. And Wilds is much cheaper, going off at only $190 per box on the secondary market, but it has sold 2,220 plus boxes as far as the collector goes. So we are seeing a massive drop off, almost, almost 10X drop off at this point. Now, let's be fair. Karlov Manor has not released yet. There will still be some sales in the coming week, but Magic pre-release often feels like the release of the product. So it's kind of like it has been released even if it hasn't. So I, I don't expect these numbers to jump by any stretch of the imagination. And it's not just the collector box where we're seeing struggles. The new, the brand new play booster, the big hit, the thing we were all waiting for is experiencing some, I don't know, turmoil as well. Now, this is not about the limited play experience with the play booster. From everything I've heard from my community, the limited play experience is still fine. Magic the Gathering has knocked the limited play out of the park for decades now. It's always a fun time. Magic pre-releases are always something worth going to, and I think that you know stays true here. Now, again, this flops back and forth on a person-by-person -person basis, whether the set theme is for you or not, but all in all, I've heard fairly good things, nothing disastrous, nothing awful that could have happened with getting rid of the draft and set booster and just going all in one box. We haven't had that here, so that's good to see. And the play booster sales do reflect that this is a more unified product, but put an asterisk here in your mind as we talk about some of this information. The play booster has sold 2,669 nice copies on TCG Player, and the price of the play booster is, is much more favorable it was, at least until recently. It's back below the $129.99. I believe it's around $124, $125 right now on the secondary market. And this is just insane. Looking at the MVP sports sale, the big sale where Magic the Other was dumped on a super early through TCG player at $129.99 a box. We're going to look back at that and be like, wow, that was actually too expensive. And speaking of that sale, the reason we put that asterisk here is because of those 2,600 plus boxes sold, 2,100 plus of them were from that sale, from a single retailer, from a giant event marketed to everybody on the platform. So I believe this is a bit of an outlier, but without that event, without that massive catalyst popping off, you wonder how many of those 2,100 boxes would have actually sold? Would we be looking at all time terrible numbers right here? And 
I'm going to go with all-time terrible for a standard set, because just comparing to the last two standard sets, the differences are, well, they're astounding. And remember that that 2100 was kind of this special event uh, during the sale of Karlov Manor, and you look and say, Ixlan has sold almost 4000 thousand set booster boxes we're going to do a play to set comparison here because it's the closest price point to compare and it's also yeah you know, people are saying and I'm, i've been saying this as well the play booster is far more set booster than it was draft booster it feels like a draftable set booster if that makes sense but that box is currently as far as ixlon goes is actually on sale on the secondary market for more you can get a set booster box for lost caverns of ixlon you're going to pay more than you will for Karlov Manor as the set booster box from Lost Caverns of Ixalan is currently $128. And Wilds of Eldrain is, is is a set that's just insane. Maybe I'll do a members only video. The, all this data is coming for you. You can find it at cardboardfinance.com if you're at your computer. And the channel members here at Hometown TCG help to promote and keep that website running to help you know eat up some of those server costs. So I'm not paying all of it out of my pocket. So consider joining the channel membership. And I'll do a member video about Wilds of Eldrain because it's insane. The set booster box is currently like $100. $130 on the secondary market versus the collector booster box was like 189 or 190 like that price gap in there is wild it's like we love the set booster and we hate the collector booster for the, it's it's crazy but that has also sold you know almost 3500 set booster boxes on the secondary market so these both these sets are going extremely well. But what does this say about Karlov Manor? What does this say about the, the new design space with the play booster? And does it say anything about Magic the Gathering as a whole? Well, just based on some of the comparisons that we just went over, I can say that I don't think Magic the Gathering as a whole is in this dangerous place. I think we're actually entering one of my favorite, re-entering one of my favorite eras of Magic the Gathering, and I'm I'm really looking forward to that as it will be a challenge for Wizards of the Coast and will better serve people like you and I out there, just fans of Magic the Gathering that are looking to buy the product. And that era is where we have this balance of standard Magic the Gathering release. Let's take Universes Beyond, let's put them outside of our mind. We're not going to talk Universes Beyond right now. We'll talk about that later on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed. But we're talking about standard Magic the Gathering releases. We're in this space where good standard sets are going to do well. They're going to sell well, and they're going to cost more money and bad magic the gathering sets are not going to sell well we have enough magic the gathering product to satiate us we don't necessarily have to go out there and buy a ton of sealed product we can buy singles or things like that to put in our commander decks or if you're part of the standard revitalization maybe you pick your cards up and put, play them in standard but either way we're re-entering this world where it's no longer the mtg finance gurus and every set to the moon and magic appreciates 5% a year till the end of eternity, and it's also no longer the AFR realm where everything is just bad, every set that comes out is horrible, you can expect it all to tank, and Magic the Gathering is worthless. I think we're in this wonderful balance where a good set comes out, looking at Lost Caverns of Ixalan, looking at Wilds of Eldraine, and we see tons of products sold, we see tons of us playing with the cards, and the price for that product is reflected, stores are able to sell the product and make some money. Karloff Manor being the antithesis of that. A set comes out that we're not necessarily sure about. Yes, you will find Karloff Manor fans at all four corners of the globe, and I, I respect that. If you like a Magic the Gathering set, heck, you like that Magic the Gathering set. More power to you, but the majority of the community seems to have turned its back on this release, and we are seeing that. Now, what this does mean is that when we have back-to-back -back bad set releases, or what the community perceives as bad set releases, I will not, I cannot be convinced that Ravnica Remastered is a bad set. I had a box opening on the channel last week, make sure you check it out, and just opening this box, I was like, this is insane. This set is so much fun. But if you have back-to-back -back sets that don't sell well, Wizards of the Coast is 100% going to feel the heat. So I don't think this is indicative of a larger Magic the Gathering problem. I do think that the quality of the sets, how we perceive them, how much fun we have playing with Magic the Gathering cards, and yes, I hate to say it, but even the value of the cards you get out of the box are going to matter now more than ever. But I want to know what you think in the comments section below. I know most of you out there always think everything is a bigger problem indicative of a whole issue with all of Magic the Gathering, but I really do think that we're going to start looking at Magic on a set-by-set -set basis and 
good sets are going to do well and bad sets are not. It's not going to be a Magic the Gathering is exploding or dying situation. We are finally reaching this wonderful harmony where we, the people, have more control over how these products do. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh. Oh, if you've never shared a hometown TCG video, there's never been a better time than right now. Click that share button. I got a bad leg, so we can't really walk off camera, so we're going to kind of hobble off camera. But until then, we'll see you around. All right, goodbye. See you.